If you want to understand how countries can best minimize tsunami casualties, you should take a look at Japan. Tsunamis are massive waves, or a series of large waves, triggered by some form of seismic activity. That activity could be an underwater volcano explosion or an earthquake. If these events occur with enough energy, they can trigger a tsunami, sending waves of mass destruction to the nearest landmass. For decades, at-risk countries have spent time, money, and resources figuring out how they can best defend themselves from these monster waves. One country has stood out in its advancements, and that's Japan. Japan is located in what's called the Ring of Fire, a zone in the Pacific Ocean known for its intense seismic activity. To put things into perspective, National Geographic claims that nearly 90% of all earthquakes occur within this zone. Since Japan is in this area, and it's on an island, it is constantly at risk for tsunamis. Tragedy struck in 2011 during the Tohoku tsunami. The waves injured thousands, and sources estimate anywhere between 16,000 and 20,000 deaths. This sparked the Reformation, and today, Japan has a culture grounded in minimizing tsunami casualties. And it all comes down to three main pillars. First comes education. Japan has worked tsunami safety protocol into their classroom curriculums. This teaches elementary school kids proper evacuation techniques with the use of drilling, slogans, and just classroom lessons. By providing these survival skills to children at such a young age, Japan has created a culture where every man, woman, and child is prepared for the worst. That way, if the worst ever does happen, there isn't panic, just protocol as practiced. The second pillar is preparation. Here, we're talking about real, physical preparations set up by the government to minimize the impact tsunamis can have on both the community and the landscape. This mainly includes seawalls, revetments, and the over 9 million trees Japan planted along its coastline to act as natural wave breakers. Finally, for the third pillar, we have detection. Japan's tsunami detection system is on the cutting edge of technology. It's called SNET, and it began development after the tragedy struck in 2011. Today, SNET is composed of 150 seafloor observatories. Each observatory is equipped with two extremely sensitive pressure sensors, along with four seismometers. Construction finished on the project in 2016. The term observatory is a little misleading, though, because these things actually look like missiles. They're all buried a meter deep into the ocean floor and connected by 5,500 kilometers of underwater wire. All in all, Japan has come a long way from where it was during the Tohoku tsunami of 2011, and the policies and culture it's created since then will continue to save lives for generations to come. But to go back to the original question, 